What's up, guys? Software Dev Jason here. So uh, I'm back again this year for, I guess, what appears to be my annual uh, Christmas uh, gift to myself blowout that I that I did last year with the Hagen Shock and the GoPro that this is being filmed on right now. So last year it was all about the CRF 230. This year it's uh, it's kind of all about the CRF 250L. So what we have here are things that that I kind of had my eye on all throughout the year. Um, I kind of maybe saved up for them or waited until they were on sale and I kind of grabbed most of this stuff right at Christmas time as kind of a, a gift to myself. Here's what we got. To start off with, um, we have a DID X-Ring chain. Uh, this is maybe maybe similar to the, the stock chain. Maybe the stock one is an O-ring. This is an X-Ring. Uh, this is a 520VX2, 120 links. So I'm gonna have to break this and, and take some of those links off. Um, so the reason I got this is the, the old one is, is this, this is a 2013 bike. It still has the stock chain on there right now. Uh, and it's starting to kink up on me, uh, especially when it's, um, when it's not really, really warm. And I'm not sure that I'll put this on yet. I think I'm going to just try to wear out this one a little bit more. Um, I don't know. I might throw it on who knows, I, but I have a chain when I need it. All right. So the next item that I picked up this uh, Christmas is, uh, this is a PBI uh, 42 tooth rear sprocket. Uh, I currently have the stock 40 tooth sprocket on the CRF 250L. That's a steel sprocket if I'm not mistaken. I think the stock one is steel. Uh, this one's aluminum. I've never had this brand. Uh, so uh, it had decent reviews and um, you know, it was actually quite a bit cheaper than the Renthal ones. Uh, and it looks pretty much the same, really light, extremely light. You know, the, the disadvantage of aluminum is, uh, you know, they don't last as long as the steel ones. You know, that steel, that steel one that's on there right now, the stock one, like I said, there's over 6,000 miles on the bike and it's not showing any signs of wear. It'll last a pretty good while. So, picked up a little Tecton uh, uh, mallet, little rubber mallet. It's got two different sides on it here and they screw off, they're replaceable. I've been buying more and more Tecton stuff recently oh yeah so yeah i have my good wrench set this is a tech ton metric set here uh, i have a tech ton torque wrench that i use and i have a few other tech ton tools that have that have really served me really really well i have some scrapers and maybe some little specialty tools from tech ton um, i have a rubber mallet and i've beat that rubber mallet to death you know when i'm trying to um uh to tap a um an axle through a wheel or something um, and I've, I've really just chewed up my existing rubber mallet and I found this on sale on Amazon and I picked it up. All right, so one of the problems with the CRF 250L is uh, uh, the small gas tank and the, the more kind of adventure off-road riding that I'm doing rather than commuting, uh, which is kind of the direction that I'm going in uh, because I'm riding with, uh, well, I was riding, was starting to ride with my father before he broke his leg. Um, the more of that I'm doing, the more that the gasoline running out of gas um, <clears throat> actually worries me. Uh, and so I need an aftermarket tank, you know, hope, more of like a, like a three gallon tank or 3.1 gallon tank or whatever. Uh, but in the interim, uh, what I've done is I picked up this uh, Wolfman uh, bottle holder and it holds uh, like a liter of, of gas. Uh, it's really nice, it, you know, everything's strapped so you can try to, you can pretty much put it anywhere. And I, the design is, really simple you just uh the, the the fuel bottles themselves have a hole in the top and uh you just have an, another strap you know that goes through the uh goes through the bottle and you just cinch it down so that it can't go anywhere just like that um and i can probably i can probably uh, snap this onto the top of my uh wolfman enduro tank bag as well all right so the other uh the other wolfman luggage piece that i picked up and it's something i've had my own for a while um, I've just never got around to buying it, never really had an immediate need for it, but uh, while I got the bottle holder, I figured I'd pick this up as well. This is just a, a front fender bag, and so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to strap this to the front fender of the 250L, or the 230 for that matter, um, especially when I'm riding on um, OHV trails uh, that are really, really rough, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to carry uh, two or three spoons uh, and a spare tube, uh, but I'm going to be putting this on the front fender, uh, depending on where I'm going to go, or what my plans are. But I plan on carrying two or three spoons and um, and the and the tubes and a spare tube, maybe two. Depends on how, if I can fit both of them in here. Uh, but 
that's a that's a pretty cool little little bag. You get it out of the way. You just mount it to the front fender. It has these metal hooks on each side here. Um, and what I've seen people do online is they they basically take a Dremel and create little rivets in their fender that these hooks will will hook onto. And and people said they've rode you know, hundreds of miles with this thing not moving off that front fender. As with all the Wolfman stuff, this stuff is just extremely tough. Um, this, I mean, this stuff is, all this Wolfman stuff that I have is gonna last forever. The next thing is, is pretty pretty big. Um, so what I have here is uh, uh, I called Race Tech and I ordered the, the, whole, the whole shebang when it comes to the fronts and rear suspension for the CRF 250L. Um, so, uh, in this box, I'm, there is, um, I'm pretty sure this is the, uh, the, uh, the springs for the front fork, um, as well as the gold valve kit for the front fork. So everything in this box should be for completely fixing the front forks of the CRF 250L. Um, and I also picked up, uh, the fork seals and the dust seals for those front forks. Should I run into problems? I don't know. Uh, exactly how these forks are made. I'm not big into the suspension stuff. I don't really know a ton about that stuff, but I assume there's some bushings in there and I probably should have ordered those as well. So when you do that, you replace the, the fork oil um, in both forks. So the, the 250L is, is the way that's the front forks are set up. Uh, one, uh, uh, one, one fork has the, um, the spring in it and, one, and the other fork has the uh, dampening cartridge in it. And um, both of them have oil. I think there's slightly different levels of oil in each fork, but each fork kind of does a different thing. Um, so you replace the oil in both forks when you're doing the install, and I think the left fork, all this stuff goes into the left fork, but you do change the oil in the right fork. Um, so I actually only got uh, one liter of this. I'm not sure that's enough. And also borrowed from uh, my neighbor uh, and a buddy of mine, uh, the Race Tech Motorcycle Suspension Bible. Uh, he just, uh, by chance, had this. His, this is what he was going to be reading to, to learn a little bit more about setting up his kid's uh, motocross suspension. And it just so happens, you know, the, the stuff that I bought is all Race Tech. And I think, and in, in one section of this book, it goes through um, installing the, the gold valves uh, in this, the same types of forks that are on this 250L. Just a note, I am going to be doing this install myself, um, and I, you know, I would like to make videos of doing it for the 250L. Uh, the problem is, is I kind of only like to make videos about stuff that you know I'm fairly comfortable with. Uh, I, it doesn't just seem it doesn't seem right for me to be making videos about things I don't know anything about, and uh, suspension definitely falls in that category. I don't really know much about suspensions, um, or as far as the the mechanical engineering. Uh, parts of suspensions. I don't know that much about it, uh, but I'm going to be reading that book some to uh, to try to get a, a basic understanding of it. Yeah, this is the fork gold valve for the CRF 250L and the fork spring kit. Yeah, this is the uh, here's the part numbers if you are interested in those at all. So these are the gold valves. Comes with a bunch of stickers there. Okay, there's the instructions. Okay, there's the gold valves. Uh, and there's the lock nut, some lock tight, some little bushings, and some other little spacers of some sort there. And uh, the shim stack. Yeah, there's the shim stack right there. So. Uh, yeah, like I said, guys, I don't know much about suspensions, and uh, everywhere I said, everywhere I read online said, uh, take this to a professional and have that done, have this stuff done. But you know, that's just kind of that's not really the way I do things. Um, if I don't try it myself, I'll never really learn how to do it. So I'm gonna give it a shot and uh, hope I don't screw up anything really bad. Uh, my guess is it'll take me twice as long as a professional, but I will learn a lot in the process. And to me, that's uh, that's probably worth it. Um, so there's an aluminum bar of some sort. I don't know what that's for. Yep, so there's the spring. So basically what you do, if I understand everything correctly, 
is uh, like I said, only one of the forks right now has a spring in it. I think the right fork has a spring in oil. That's all that's in there. And all the dampening and whatnot happens in the left fork. All the magic happens over there. But from the, from the, uh, the little bit that I have read so far, uh, I'm pretty sure you add this spring uh, to the left fork. So then both sides will have a, um, uh, have a spring in it. One dampening only leg, one spring only leg. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but I was pretty sure this, you don't replace, um, you don't replace the, uh, the spring that's in there. This, this is an additional spring that gets added, but I could be completely wrong about that. So don't take my word for it. I probably won't video me doing this, um, unfortunately, because I already don't know what I'm doing. So, uh, trying to make a video and record everything that I'm doing would be an editing nightmare because I'm, we're talking probably it's going to take me like five or six hours to fumble my way through this and, and double check everything. Um, so trying to edit that much footage is, is not going to happen, unfortunately. Uh, the only w other cool thing from Christmas this year that you might see in the videos, which is, is probably worth, uh, worth mentioning is, uh, this little guy right here, which is pretty cool. So this is my nephew's. I mean, my wife got this for him. It's um, it's a 2017 Polaris um, Outlaw 50. So this is, uh, I think the Outlaws a couple years ago or something, maybe in two strokes. This is a little four stroke 50 cc engine. This, uh, this isn't a two stroke race racing four wheeler, although it kind of styled like that, but it's, you know, it's just a little four stroke. So he picked up riding the four wheeler a lot, a lot easier and it's hard to get him off of it. I'll show, I'll throw up a picture of that somewhere on the screen or maybe the whole screen. Anyway, guys, that's going to be it for uh, my Christmas bundle this year. Guys, I almost forgot like the biggest thing out of all this. And that is the one thing that I do not have right now, which is the, uh, the race tech, uh, GS three custom built rear shock. So I, that has been ordered as well. Uh, unfortunately, I waited until the last minute before Christmas to order that. And I ordered it like two days before their shop closed for Christmas. So I do have a Racetech GS3 custom built shock for my weight and my riding style and the type of riding that I'm gonna be doing on the way. Uh, well, actually, no, it's not on the way yet. It's like a three week or something build time. And their shop is actually at the time I'm recording this video, their shop is still closed, I believe. It's going to be mid January at the earliest that I would get uh, the, the rear shock in the mail. The rear shock will be the icing on the cake because the forks are like, they're, they're too soft. Uh, they bought them out a lot for me, but so does the rear. I think maybe the rear, it may be even worse than the front forks. The more that I've ridden this thing off road. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's not it, it's not the level of bad that the CRF 230 is stock, not even close, but it's pretty bad. One thing I will mention is that you kind of got to swallow your pride and you have to be honest with the people at Race Tech when you order it about your your riding style, your riding level and your weight if you're self-conscious about your weight to people over the phone for whatever reason, be honest about that stuff because they're going to build this thing custom for you. Don't you know, don't, you know, lie about your skill level and stuff. It, you gain nothing and you'll lose a lot by doing that. Just to give you an idea of what I told them, uh, as far as my riding style and stuff goes, I told them the, the, the ways I want to be using this bike is for uh, enduro slash trail riding plus supermoto, which are two completely different types of riding. But uh, hopefully they can work their magic and find something that will work in between for both of those. And as far as my uh, speed or my r skill level, you know, it may hurt people's pride to say this. And if, if at one point in time you were extremely fast B rider, borderline A rider, but you're not anymore, you know, don't be ashamed to say that you're a C rider now. Cause, uh, you know, I've raced some hair scrambles and stuff and, but I'm not anywhere close to an A rider. So I think I told them that I, uh, you know, if I'm really, I'm really, romping it off road i said i'm a solid c maybe borderline b rider at, at most and i said but i was leaning towards a c rider just to be safe because i'm not going to be racing the bike so uh be honest with what be honest with what you're telling the people um on the phone they're going to make it to suit you so there's no point in lying about it so or you know 
you know, uh, inflating your ego, if you will, um, about how fast you are and stuff like that. So yeah, they're probably building this for me as if I'm a C rider, which is fine by me because uh, even if I am faster than that, in some cases, if I'm racing or something, when I'm out riding with you know friends and family, I'm not going to be doing that. So that's not how I want it to be built, if you know what I mean. So uh, didn't want to leave that out, but anyway, thanks for watching.